Hi and welcome to my review of the Blade 9 e-scooter from Ian Motors. Today I'm going to tell you why I love this very much and about a little bit about the pros and the cons that you maybe not hear every, anywhere else. So I'm, I'm going to be as honest as I can and tell you my personal opinion and what you can do to get the most out of the scooter because I think that's maybe the most important part here. I like it a lot, but um, the first time I picked it up and I got it out of the box and, and actually tried to stand on it, it, it was actually the different um, opinions. I said, oh my God, it's, it's not really good because um, when I put it out, it had a different controller than it has now. It had a different display than it has now and it had a different handlebar and oh, the handlebar were the same but it was mounted a lot different and this all while the rest of the scooter is the same but um, this makes such a difference that you actually would think it's a completely different scooter so if you purchase the Blade 9 um, put some attention in which version you actually get because it makes a lot of a difference so what I have here, and that's, that's the version I really like, is um, the version with the mini motors display and uh, the semi-hydraulic brakes. And most importantly for me, as I'm a relatively tall guy, I'm 1 meter 93, I have two adapters for the handlebar. So it's not the original clamp here um, that, that holds the handlebar, because the original handlebar was like, I show you. Yep. Was like this here. Yeah. And you see that there's a big difference. Yeah. So if the handlebar is here, okay, like, like this, right way around, um, it, it was for me, it was, it was like, like, like that. Yeah. Uh, it was not very comfortable and um, I couldn't stand a long time on it. But the good thing about the Blade 9 is that it can be tuned a lot to your liking uh, and the, <laughs> the handlebar stem ends up in a 28.6 millimeter diameter part and this part can fit with almost any normal handlebar adapter. So I have here a part that makes it longer and a little bit higher and the part that puts it a little bit more in front because that's the next thing uh, with the original version it was like 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 also like this yeah it was much down um too too short and it was too much near near my chest so that was not very comfortable to hold because if you want to hold it in the right way you you want it a little bit um to have have your arms um, stretched a little bit more so you're more stable. If you have it like this, it's not, not that comfortable. And with many shorter scooters, like this is, this, it's not a really big model, but it's also not a really small model. It's right in between. And for, for me, this, these two things made a lot of difference. And uh, we are a reseller, my, my, my wife, uh, is the boss of a company that sells scooters and small company and we um, we have this model and we use this version with these adapters because we think it's so much more comfortable maybe with the exception if you're like one meter and six like 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 this tall then or a kid then you would just take out this part of the adapter put the handlebar more down and then it's okay, it's, it's still okay. But um, I think this is the, the nicest version. The handlebar here we use is pretty straight. It has a long straight part in the middle. That means it's very easy to mount lights that point forward and not because it's, it's curved, pound in, um, in any direction where you don't want it. And you have still enough space to put your cell phone there with a cell phone holder or whatever you like. You have this uh, voltage and key. 
you have the turn signals, you have the lights button, you have the horn. I, I don't show it now because it's really loud. Um, I, I like it, but I only use it if I have to because it annoys people and it annoys the people around here. What I really, really liked is with the mini motors display and okay this is a little bit maybe a promotion for mini motors but their their display it, it looks a little bit old-fashioned okay um i get that it's um, a normal lcd display with a green background light but it's so much easier to read in sunlight because the lcd technology the old lcd like the old lcd clocks can be read in any brightness and it can be also read in total darkness, but uh, the normal, these OLED displays that should be much newer technology, but they are much harder to read because they have to um, make the brightness themselves and be brighter than the sun. And that's really, really hard on a sunny day. And with the LCD, they are black. The, the screen is black. So um, it's not really a problem if the sun is very bright. It can be read exactly the same as if it's really dark. And what is also a very good thing that the Mini Motors version has is it has a very, very direct throttle pickup. So you press the throttle, it goes off like a rocket and you press the brakes. And if you have the electronic brakes on, like I, I like, I really like the electronic brakes of the Mini Motors single controller scooters. So um, the scooters that have the mini motors display and throttle with one controller, so the dual motors is a little bit different, but with the single motors versions, you have the electronic brake in exactly the right strength. You have five settings. Maybe five is a little bit strong, but three and four is very good for the taste of almost everyone. So three is gentle but good yeah so you feel the electronic brake it breaks you down pretty well but gently and four is the same but strong so if you even if you push it at a very um, slow pace you feel when you um, press the brakes that it really slows down a lot so i can show you it it also reacts very um, abruptly so you press the brake it breaks and it breaks really well. I use it on the strange setting for it. It's like this. Um, okay, this was the rear brake with a mechanical brake. Now the front brake and only the electronic brake works. It's almost the same. Yeah, you see. So uh, what I do in the scooter is I only press the front brake a bit, and it cuts off the rear of the motor and. Um, works on the electronic brake and the electronic brake does let's say 90% of the braking. I really love it. Um, it's really, it's snippy. Yeah. So you, you press the accelerator, it, it, it runs off, you press the brake, it breaks. So um, what is a big difference to other scooters with not the mini motors version is that the, the other scooters, they slowly get to pace, they slowly pick up speed, and then you, you brake at some point to get slower, and yeah. And here it is, you, you go off like a rocket up to the very last second, push the brakes, and you only push the, the front brake lever a bit, so the electronic brake kicks in to stand still. You push it a little bit more because then you act on the front brake, the mechanical brake as well. So you have front and rear wheel braked and it works really well. It works as good or in some cases better than a hydraulic brake without all the hassle of these electronic brakes. Um, the scooter has a 28.8 amp hour battery, 48 volt, which is a lot, a really, really big battery. And this not only means that you can drive a long, long, long range, like I expect if you're not driving full speed, I would say you can do 100 kilometers or more on a very heavy person that drives full speed, which is for this scooter with 
the Mini Motors version, full speed is around 40 kilometers per hour with um, really charged full. You can get like 42, 43. Uphill even it's still 38, so it, it doesn't really slow down uphill much. If it's a steep hill, of course, it slows down, but it's really good at hills. Uh, but you have the benefit with the electronic brake that as the battery is so big, the impact if you brake electronically and it recovers energy is very small comparatively. So it's not only with exactly the right strength, the electronic brake, it's also um, not bad for the battery. Because on a, on a very small battery, a high load from electronic braking and high uh, fast charging that this induces is not really good. But here it's perfectly balanced. The next thing I like a lot um, is the, actually the handling. So for me it's, it's okay, it's very comfortable because of the high handlebars. It's 106 centimeters from the deck in this configuration. Perfect for me. But also that it, with these tires and the suspension, the suspension is medium strength. So it's not really hard, but it's also not really soft. You, you always have a good connection to the, um, to the street. You have a good, a good cornering handling. What I like a lot is that for a small scooter, they put in a pretty good suspension. So the rear has these springs and you can tune it a little bit up and down. It always feels, however, it's um, rated as 1,500 lbs per inch. So that means if the suspension is pushed up one inch, it lets you feel a load of 1,500 lbs, which is not, um, not really you feel it, but the scooter as there is a, a lever arm and it has like, here is the wheel, here is the suspension. So it, it moves less. If, um, if the wheel itself moves like an inch up, the suspension only moves like a third of an inch up. So you feel like 500 LBS if the wheel is lifted one inch. Yeah, like it works a little bit like that. So if you um, are a very light person, I would recommend to change the spring to like 1000 LBS per inch. You can buy from China or from a local shop a cheap ass spring like Amazon or whatsoever yeah, or from, from us. Um, I have here a 1000 LBS per inch. It was $12 the, the whole thing. I could just um, change the spring because this silver one, I, I, I don't like the appearance, but uh, unscrew it. Take the spring, put it in here and have a softer suspension, which is really, really easy. It's 135 millimeters, the whole eye to eye. And I think it has about 2, 2, 2.5 centimeters of travel, which with, the le with, with this lever arm, so if the spring here moves let's say two centimeters, then here where the actual the wheel is, it's like six, seven centimeters. So pretty fine. And even if you do a big jump, I tried it with bigger jumps um, over not only curbs, but um, from higher curbs like this or from small, it's not really a hill, it's uh, yeah, from <laughs> Sprungschanze then you, um, you feel that it still don't bottom out the spring and it, it feels good. It's not super soft, but it's perfectly balanced for faster street riding and you always have a good feeling if you use the stock suspension. On the front, there is a small spring in it and a rubber bumper. So you have a, a little bit of soft travel and then you hit the rubber bump and it gets harder. So it helps with the big bumps as well as the small bumps. I really like that. So the tuning is good, but if you don't like it, you can still exchange the springs front and rear and it's each like 10, 5, 
15 dollars depending on what you use but it's really cheap to change the suspension and i would recommend it if you are really not happy with it let's say you're a very big guy should still be okay but if you are very um, very small and very light you could um, still make it softer not only by tuning it but also by changing the springs what i also like a lot is the new light they added there is a, a headlight that's pretty bright for a, a normal light that version that's a very commonly recommended light and it has three settings and on the highest setting this light it's still pretty much less bright maybe even a lot less bright than and a lot less focused than the light that comes with this one uh, with the scooter so this light you can actually yeah you don't even need it i have a 150 euro bush and miller light and this one okay this is a lot better but if you don't have anything else than this light um, that comes with the scooter it's still a lot better than many other scooters with additional headlight up here so i can really recommend um, to try it out and maybe if you don't ride often in the night you don't even need much more than this so i, I really like it so it, it's not exclusive to e motors but um, I like all the scooters that have this light because it's a very, very good light. And we have on the, on the Blade 9 the semi hydraulic, the Zoom semi hydraulic brakes. Uh, I also like them. They, they are not, maybe not as good as the really high end or medium end hydraulic brakes. But for a semi hydraulic brake, it's pretty fine. The difference to the standard brakes that brake as well is that the semi hydraulic brakes have pistons that come from both sides and the standard brake only one side moves and typically bends the disc to the other side and what happens then is if you as as, as, as it bends the disc it really um, stops the scooter and it, it blocks the reel so with the standard brakes if you set them up really well you break about as good but it's only on and off so if you brake it blocks the wheel and if you don't yeah you drive but with the semi hydraulic brakes you can pretty much fine tune how much you want to brake and if you okay you have to to um, really pull the brakes to to make a full stop but two fingers are okay so you don't need the whole hand two fingers are okay then you can pretty much go to a halt very quick but on this scooter you have the good electronic brakes and this helps it a lot not only do you save a lot on on the brake pads because yeah like i said before 90 percent is braking from the electronic brake for me but also you augment the strength of the um, normal cable actuated brakes and this is really really helpful with these medium quality brakes yeah they, they really need the help what you have um, other than the headlight is also pretty good i have to switch it on again pretty good front additional lights here so they are they are good to be seen um, pretty bright and also can be seen from a wide angle you have the rear lights here that also can be seen from a good angle you have the turn lights They are only helpful for the ones behind you. So this is maybe something that I would like to see uh, improved is to have also front turn lights, maybe in the handlebars or here somewhere so that you, ha you have these um, turn light signals already. You just could wire additional turning lights, but they don't have it by default. So that's something I like to see improved. And you have the brake lights which are separate to the rear lights. That's also something I like a lot because it's more obvious that you brake if additional brake lights light up than it is if a brake light just starts to blink. It's, this is the better version. I like it more. What you also have is these LED strips in here. They are 12 volt, which is great because 
It's very easy to just change them to any color you like. You get a 12 volt LED strip. If you can solder, yeah, then you can solder it um, other than the original one. You just change it and you'll be done. Yeah, you can also put in the RGB LED strips and have a controller for it or whatever you like. The Mini Motors version of the Blade 9 comes with a 5 amp 12 volt converter of this maybe one and a half amps are used. So you have a lot of power left for all the applications you want, which is pretty, pretty great. What I also like about the scooter is that you have a carry handle here and you need it because the scooter is pretty heavy. Uh, it has a motor that is rated for 500 watt, but built more like an 800 watt motor which means it can take a lot of power until it overheats. You have a 500 watt motor that is powered by the controller that can put out 1400 watt as a maximum. So that's pretty, pretty much. And it, it really, really has a good torque uphill. I tried with, with my white and with the scooter and got up a hill of about eight degrees, um, sorry, of about 11 degrees which doesn't uh, sound much, but in, in reality it is much. So most of, scoot of the scooters of this category struggle a lot or don't even make it up that hill. So you need a lot of power to get up an 11 degree hill. Most of the claims you see, scooters are claimed, smaller scooters like they can do 20 degrees of hill climb, but that's not even remotely true. The next thing that uh, I really like here is that the motors have tubeless tires on them and these are 9 inch tires. Tires um, I found to like a lot because I, had a, <laughs> I didn't have a flat but on one tire, on the front tire, uh, the, the air didn't really hold in and I didn't notice because the tire is so strutty that um, it can basically run flat. Yeah, so if you happen to have a flat, you could just drive home and maybe you don't even notice. But um, I filled in a tire sealant and now it works fine. I guess it was just not perfectly on the rim. What I like about the tires is that other than many others I have seen, it's um, pretty easy and good good centered so it's not much tire wobble and it's not much to do um, to balance the tire so it has a good feeling a good stable feeling on it and it's a pretty wide tire which helps um, to not get into rails of a tramway or something like that and you don't really feel that much difference that I would ex have expected to a 10 inch tire so it's 9 inch but um, with these tires, I have a pretty great feeling and that I have driven with many 10 inch tires that I liked less. That doesn't mean that they are not better 10 inch tires, but um, there are many worse 10 inch tires than this 9 inch tire. So it's pretty, pretty great. Uh, what could be improved a little bit is this fender. It, it looks nice and it, it helps to fend off the splash and rain that comes um, from the tire to you. But it doesn't really protect the, the rear of the scooter and it splashes right into the spring, which is not pretty great. So this could be better. And on the front, you have this um, plastic added to the to the fender, which helps a bit, but they could have made it just a little bit bigger. You, you can do it yourself, so it's not really a problem, but um, this could have been a little bit improved. What I also like is that on the stem, they have these um, inlets and outlets a little bit rounded, so there is not a sharp edge. That's, that's pretty cool. That means even if you don't have a perfect uh, wrapping here, it still won't break all the cables. It doesn't look that perfect here on my unit because I have stretched this very far. So it, it's not the original, um, not the original size and height. 
and I would have to change this wrapping with a longer one, which I just didn't do for now. But that's my fault, not Ian Motors. And um, the same thing is true um, down here. So I have um, put much more emphasis to have here a good covering of the cable than down to, to the cable inlet itself. Which brings me to another part. Um, here is the, the passage of the cable into the deck. There's a lot of space in the deck left, even with the biggest battery, and you have enough space to put in your GPS tracker or whatsoever you want. But be aware that it's very well isolated electronically, so maybe it's not the best position inside because you won't get a good signal. But otherwise, the deck inside is isolated very well, and it would be very easy to have it um, waterproofed. It comes, it comes rated as 54, but um, I would say um, it's okay like it comes. So splash water can't come directly in and it has a very thick and good uh, rubber surrounding cover that, uh, that helps a lot to, um, to fend off the water. But it could be, uh, yeah, you can improve it yourself a little bit if you seal all the, the remaining edges and surroundings. And this is not really hard on this scooter because it's not much to seal. Maybe just here from the front, it's pretty tight anyways, but there is a small gap. Uh, not, it's not an open gap, but um, you see two parts are just ejected to each other and here you put the sealing and you're done. So that's pretty great. What you have to do on the scooter, like on most other scooters, if you get it, check all the screws. Uh, most of mine were good. Some had to be um, tightened a little bit more, but okay, that's what I expect on the scooter. It's just the way it is. And what uh, is what I was to mention, here is the folding mechanism. It folds a little bit like you see it on other scooters. It has the same mechanism that is used on these, like, I think Inokim and some others use this. Um, also the, the Kugo G2, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same yeah, on the Kugo. Uh, this is with a lever that you pull and then you can fold it. It, on first um, sight, it looks a little bit like these Xiaomi things. But it's a lot different, it's a lot wider, it's a lot more strutty. So um, this not only does have no play, but it, it also will uh, work a lot longer than on this Xiaomi like and so because it's much thicker and wider and therefore less prone to have any problems. And it is it, it's hard to, to, to show, but there is um, very, very little wobble on the scooter. Put it. So, so you can a little bit flex the stem and these um, steering parts here. So they bend a little bit if you push hard, but it's not a wobble. So you really have to push and pull that you feel a little bit. And the feeling is really great. It, it's not this, this typical, you see these commercials or this where the, the, the people that test the scooter, they get on the scooter and they jump a lot and jump up. But that doesn't really make sense because that only means that the scooter is super bouncy. And here it's, it's suspended, you feel it, but it's not, it doesn't throw you in the air. And it shouldn't, yeah, really. So it's, it's perfectly balanced. There is the, Pretty normal kickstand. Up. I'll show it again. That's the same kickstand that you find on many, many scooters. I don't have a problem with that, um, other than I had to put some shoes on it so it doesn't scratch my floor. But it's pretty well. These reflective stickers are added by myself. That's uh, 
a must have in Austria where I live. So these don't come standard, but I guess it's a good idea to have them. And yeah, I guess that's it. What are the pros and cons of this scooter in, um, in short order? Good headlight, the tall handlebars, the good mini motors controller, the good combination of the brakes, the good acceleration and torque, not, maybe not the highest speed, but a good speed, a very big battery, and uh, a good suspension. Not the best suspension, but a good mix of, with, with a good street performance. It's good, it's agile, very agile. What's also good, um, I like the tires. So especially these tubeless tires, um, I, I like a lot. The motors are good and strong, so that's also a big benefit. What's not perfect is that the, the turning signals are only on the rear. That could be improved with turning signals on the front. The scooter could be a little bit lighter. So it, my unit has 26 kilograms and I, I know it's, it's, not, it's not a small scooter. It can drive a very long distance. It feels great, but it's not the most transportable scooter. And in this version with the bigger motors and the bigger battery, it's not really a commuter that you, you take on the bus or in the train. You drive the whole way with it because it, it makes fun. It's, um, it's really great, but it's not something um, you would like to carry many flight of stairs. What I also like to see improved it's okay, but it, it could be better, are the fenders. Front is okay by now, um, but the rear, it could be just a little bit bigger.